2019 was Funko's biggest year yet. Just tons and tons of really nice Funko Pop releases from pretty much every significant fandom there is. So picking the very best of Funko was extremely hard this year. Harder than every other year. This time the categories are Best Chase, Best Town, Best Multipack, Best Moment, Best 6 Inch, Best Ride, the Top 10 Funko Pops of the Year, and we'll finish off with the Best Series Overall for 2019. But before all that, let's start with the most improved Funko Pop of the Year. For the most improved pop, I'm looking at the biggest gap in quality between the original and the remake. So the remake may not be one of the best pops of the year, or even an honorable mention for the best pop of the year, but it is significantly better than the original. It's the most improved. The original Reaper from the Overwatch series is okay. It's got some nice details, but I always thought it was one of the weaker ones from the Overwatch series, because that series is so nice, and all the other characters kind of overshadowed this pop. But this 2019 remake really makes him stand out with that action pose and that smoky black translucent cape. The original Dark Phoenix pop isn't bad, but it does not compare to how awesome the 2019 version is with the translucent fire wings behind her and that kind of floaty action pose she's in and the white eyes and the hair sculpt and the gold paint instead of yellow. Just a big, big improvement on the original. But the most improved pop to me is Iceman. The original has got to be one of the worst pops that Funko has ever made. And while this new Iceman isn't like the best one of the year, it definitely is the most improved over that original. He actually looks like ice in the new one. His little ice bridge that he builds is way improved. You can actually see some definition in the body sculpt and the face. And they wisely made the eyes just ice color as well instead of white. It's a major, major improvement. There wasn't very many good chases this year. In fact, I think there was a lot more bad ones than good ones. But there were a few that stood out from the rest, including this Vivian Ward. The difference is that in the chase, she's wearing the blonde wig that she wears in the movie. Because this is her hooker outfit. And when she's out hooking, she wears a blonde wig. So it's a great idea for a chase. And on the actual pop, the blonde hair sits a little higher than it normally would. So it makes it look like it's a wig. I also like the Angus Young chase. The difference is he's wearing an all blue schoolboy uniform and he has the horns on the hat, which is what makes it cool. It's the horns that really put it over the top. It's not the best chase in the world, but it's definitely better than the commons. Sometimes the chases seem lamer than the commons. It's not the case with this one. The best chase of the year though is Romeo from Romeo plus Juliet. The common version is him in his medieval knight Halloween costume and the chase is him in his street clothes with the pegged pants and the Hawaiian style shirt. He's also holding a gun and his face is a little different too with a cut and some bruising on the cheek. So for this chase, they changed the head and the body and the body is a new sculpt. It's not just a different paint application and that always makes the best chases when the head and the body are different than the common. It feels like a whole new figure. It feels like it's worth chasing after it or paying a little extra for it. I have this chase myself and I paid 25 bucks for it. And to me, it was worth it because he does look so cool. Funko continues to be wisely selective with which six inch figures they make. Not too many to choose from, but the ones that did stand out to me were the Mount Lady from My Hero Academia. Really like the color combination and those big horns on her. The comic book version of Thanos, right as he does the snap. What I like about this one is the metallic paint job. What I don't like about it is that on the actual pop, the brown detailing on the skulls is a little hard to see, so they just kind of look white. But otherwise, it's a pretty cool 6-inch pop. And I almost made this one number one. It's the Maleficent Dragon, blowing green fire that glows in the dark. Really amazing, eye-catching pop. The only reason I didn't make it number one is that there's already a Maleficent Dragon that looks very similar to this one. This one is just blowing fire. So the number one six inch pop to me is Jaws Biting Quint. And yeah, I didn't realize this was a six inch pop at first. I thought it was a movie moment. I guess if they added a couple of translucent blue waves to it, it would be a movie moment. But as it is, it's considered a six inch pop. And it definitely does stand out to me as the best one. It's two pops in one. It's bloody, it's gory, it's an iconic character, Jaws. 
Over-the-top violent stuff like this always looks funny to me in pop form, and I think it's one of the things that makes Funko Pops interesting and conversation starters is that juxtaposition between either taboo characters or violent scenes mixed together with that super cute pop aesthetic. I am not a big fan of the Pop Towns. I think a lot of them lack detail to me, and they just don't really look like a Funko product, unless there's a Funko Pop right next to them, which is why I imagine that they do come with a Funko Pop. I can't imagine Pop Towns being around for very long. I guess the future will tell, but I just don't think it's a product that's gonna be a hit in the long run. But this year, if I had to pick which ones I think were the best, it would be the Up House with Kevin. I think the balloons should be a little smaller and just a lot more of them. And they should be at least as wide as the house. And the house does have some nice details on it. There's no big, flat, plain panels of plastic. And the Kevin Pop looks okay. I would have made Dante's Inferno Room from Beetlejuice number one. Because it does look pretty cool and the Beetlejuice Pop is cool. But it's not accurate. I mean, this is supposed to be a strip club. And in the movie, it says live and nude underneath the air conditioned sign. And it says girls, girls, girls on the building. I think it should say that on the pop town. I mean, it doesn't even say air conditioned. I've seen them make super tiny little details on things so they can add at least air conditioned on there. And it's a strip club, right? There's no kids buying this. There's no parents buying this for kids. This is an adult fan of the movie that can handle their collectible saying girls, girls, girls on it. I mean, they're buying a strip club. Why are you sanitizing it for them? Just make it accurate or don't make it at all. So to me, the number one pop town is SpongeBob's Pineapple House. SpongeBob is a pretty wacky cartoon where everything's out of scale. So the fact that he wouldn't even fit through his house's door doesn't really matter. And the pop is cool too because it's SpongeBob with Gary. And you can only get him with the pop town. When they do pop towns, I think they have to be very, very selective about what they do because they do take up so much space. And without the pops, you can't even really tell what they are, half of them. But you can with this pineapple house. I mean, everybody knows that Spongebob lives in a pineapple under the sea. Definitely the pop town that makes the most sense to me. Of the pop rides this year, I think Disney had a lot of really good ones. Like Alice in Wonderland in the teacup from the iconic Disneyland ride looks awesome. Also, the Moana Pop Ride with her two little sidekicks. I always love when they have the little mini companions. Just makes the Pop Ride more visually appealing. I also really like the Matterhorn Pop Ride with the Abominable Snowman. But the best one to me is the Witch King on the Fell Beast. These are the coolest type of Pop Rides to me when it's one pop on top of another pop. Because then the actual ride is going to have a ton of really nice detail to it. Do I like this one better than, say, Alice in the Teacup? Probably not. I think I would rather own Alice, but I do have to acknowledge that the detail in the sky is just way better. You have metal textures, cloth textures, reptile skin textures, metallic paints, flat paints, glossy paints. This is just a really awesome sculpt with a great paint job. If you're an out of box collector and you put all your Lord of the Rings pieces together with this guy in the middle, it would make for a very awesome display. I'm wrapping up all the moments into one, so it doesn't matter if it's from a video game, history, movie, or whatever. If it's a moment, it all belongs in this category. And as I was looking through the 2019 moments, the first one that stood out to me is this Batman and Catwoman. Really love the contrast of the black and the green, and how they made Catwoman's face look kind of distressed, coupled together with that really cool sculpt of Batman. I mean, look at the hands underneath the cape. Those look really nice. And I love the shape of this piece. Washington crossing the Delaware is another great one. I like how they gave Washington a little bit bigger nose than the other two guys. It makes it look more like Washington. The flag looks really cool. You got three pops in one. Really an awesome piece. I also really like the kiss the girl movie moment. Very memorable scene. And I like the details of little Sebastian in there and flounder and the translucent plastics. It all comes together to look really nice. I think Funko did a really good job with all the Ghostbuster remakes and this movie moment looks really really cool the only thing i don't like about it is the big clear rod that's holding up slimer i wish they could have figured out a way to have him floating without having that rod i feel like they could have done that if they would have worked on it a little longer 
This Batman vs. the Joker moment from the original Tim Burton Batman movie is also really cool. I really like the gargoyle on the side. I think with these movie moments, they have to add stuff like this and not just have it be like on a flat piece of plastic and not just call it a movie moment because you have more than one pop on it. I really like when they incorporate more of the actual scene. Like they do in what I consider to be the number one movie moment of the year, the Ballad of Fallen Angels Cowboy Bebop movie moment. I think the way the two pops are posed is really dynamic. It's exactly how it is from the movie scene. But what puts it over the top is that gigantic round stained glass window behind them. And it is on translucent plastic. I've seen it in person and it looks amazing. And the light catches it really nicely. To me, this is what a Funko Pop movie moment should be. It should have something bigger and visually striking from the scene the moment is from like this does. Some of the strongest releases that Funko put out this year were its Funko Pop multi-packs, specifically the ones from the Comic Cons. Aku and Samurai Jack look awesome. And yeah, Aku is really big in the show, but at least they made him bigger than Samurai Jack in the two-pack, significantly bigger. Both of these designs really work as pops and is perfect as a two-pack. I also really like the Weasley three-pack from the Quidditch World Cup. Great idea for Funko Pops, very appropriate for a multi-pack. When I was putting together this video, the hardest thing was deciding whether I was going to make this King and Kodos 2-pack number one or not, because it's awesome. And the only reason I'm not putting it in the actual top 10 of Funko Pops is because it's a multi-pack, and in my top 10s, I like to keep it to just single pop releases, and having a multi-pack in there isn't fair. But this, to me, is one of the best. The sculpt is perfect. The domes look great. They glow in the dark. They're solid. They feel like more expensive collectibles than they are. They're just perfect. But the only thing more perfect than this multi-pack is the Carl and Ellie multi-pack. Kang and Kodos, Carl and Ellie, if I were to include multi-packs in my top 10, they would be one and two or very close to it. But yeah, during San Diego Comic-Con, this was the very first pop I went after because I knew it was going to be the one that sold out the fastest because of how good the idea is and how well it's executed. Tons of tiny details, all done just right. They're colorful, they look just like the characters, and they should never make these separate. They should be a two-pack like they are now, and it's one of the most cherished items that I own. And now it's almost time for the top 10, but first, some honorable mentions. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, Funko had a lot of great releases this year, and picking the top 10 was very hard. So this year, I ended up with a lot of honorable mentions, so I can't really talk about each one, because then this video would be an hour long. So here's a quick montage of the ones that didn't quite make it, but I still think were very good this year. Papa Emeritus in Secondo is a truly unique and eye-catching pop. I had never heard of the band Ghost before I saw this pop, but just because it looked so cool, I immediately looked them up and went down that rabbit hole. They're a Swedish metal band, of course, 
And I really like their satanic cult gimmick. And the music is pretty cool too. Definitely recommend checking them out. But the pop is really cool. It didn't come out too long ago. It's already going up in value. And I feel it will continue to do so because of the cult-like fan base of this band. Funko did an excellent, excellent job with this one. And I hope they do more obscure stuff like this in the future. The second I saw the Red Rain Batman, I knew I had to have it. I love the sculpting on the cowl, the long bat ears, the way they did the hands, the cape. You could even see the spine poking out on the back. Those red eyes are piercing, but the best part is the way they did that bloody mouth. I really love this pop. It's a nice creepy version of a character that everybody knows, so it gets people talking about it when they see it in someone's collection. Really love this pop. He'd finally found that perfect way. The Surfer Freddy is one of my all-time favorite Funko Pops and definitely my favorite Freddy Funko. When they do Freddy Funkos of like Venom or Pennywise or some other established character, they're all right. I get why people like them, but the Freddy Funkos I like are the ones that have something to do with like a culture or a place like this Surfer Freddy. He was released at Fun Days and their theme was Luau. That's why he's wearing the Lays. But it also takes place in San Diego and there's a big surf culture in San Diego as well. So to me, it was very appropriate to release this guy in San Diego Comic Con Fun Days. And he's done really well. This guy looks great out of the box. And I hope they make more Freddy Funkos like this guy. Another one of my very favorite lines is the spastic plastic line where Funko releases its own wacky characters. I imagine as a Funko artist, this would be the funnest line to work on because you get to make up your own character. And my favorite one that was released this last year was TJ. He's got a day of the dead paint job on his skull. I really like the mariachi style sombrero he's wearing, the bullet belt, the bottle of what I'm guessing is tequila, the gold tips on his boots. And I really like that big, gigantic sculpt on the mustache. The only thing that would make him better is if he glowed in the dark, but that's a small thing because he's already pretty perfect. And I hope Funko does more characters like this that are specific to a culture, but done through the spastic plastic lens. A series of 10 or 15 of these from all different countries would be amazing. This Orion figure from Summoner's War is a pop that kind of flies under the radar because I'm not sure how popular Summoner's War is. I had never heard of it, but I don't play that many video games. But I don't hear too many people talking about this pop at all or the series, but I think it's really well done. I think the character lends itself into pop form because it is a smaller character, but since it's on this ball, it gives it the height it should be at around four inches, but the character is still smaller than the other characters in the series. So he's still to scale, if that makes sense. I really like the combination of colors, that baby blue with the pink, with the magenta, with the yellow, mixed with those really royal colors of burgundy and gold. Looks very beautiful. And I like the rough collar and the fur around the crown. This is just a very gorgeous and whimsical pop that I think is underrated because it belongs to a series that's just not that popular. This glow-in-the-dark Madame Leota puts the rest of the Haunted Mansion pops to shame because all the other ones don't glow in the dark. And I'm talking about the ones that came out this year. Just unbelievable to me that they don't glow. But Madame Leota does, and it's one of the reasons that she is such a great pop. This is one of those pops that would look good out of the box on somebody's shelf. I do that. I'm not really an out-of-box collector, but I do like to take one or two random pops out of the box to put on a bookshelf. Or like say, Remy from Ratatouille, I'll put in my kitchen. I think this Madame Leota is one of those ones that you can do that with. She doesn't need a bunch of other pops next to her to make her look good. This one is eye-catching all on its own. The Funko Hollywood exclusive Chester Cheetah. The difference between this one and the Common is that this one's holding a bag of Cheetos. So obviously that makes it way better than the Common. And the reason I'm putting this on the list is because the design of the original Chester Cheetah, you know, the cartoon from the commercials, is super stylized. A very long face, long lanky limbs. I imagine that 
it was quite a challenge for whatever Funko artist had to translate that into pop form because pops don't have long faces and they don't have long limbs. So it must have been very challenging. But that sculptor did a fabulous job translating something that probably shouldn't work as a pop, but it really does. Looks just like Chester Cheetah. It doesn't look like some generic cheetah that they had to put a bag of Cheetos in. Even without the bag of Cheetos, you can tell that that is Chester Cheetah. The glasses look cool on them. The printing on the Cheetos bag looks really nice and clean. The only thing that would have made this guy perfect is if it was also flocked, which is probably coming. But as is, this guy is one of the best pops of the year. And talking about pops that can be out of the box and look amazing without a bunch of other pops next to it, it's the Flocked Fox. Really loving the colors on this one. Really like the translucent flames and how they act as a stand. But it's not obvious at first. You really have to look to see where it's actually attached to the pop. Where most pops, you know, you can tell that they're using some effect as a stand. But they hide it really well on this one. It is one of the most visually striking pops in my collection. It's one of the best of the year. And if you don't agree, Fox you. The King Homer is absolutely perfect. It looked simple at first, but it's really not. Where they decided to give him some kind of fur texture is very calculated and stylized, and it's done just right. They made him significantly bigger than the other ones because they decided to not make him six inch, and that's fine. I actually prefer it in this case. They've really improved on how they translate the Simpsons over into pop form because some of the originals weren't that good, but the new ones that came out this year do represent the characters a lot better. And King Homer was a perfect one to do in this first wave of Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. I feel like they're going to do another wave because they are pretty popular. And I can see giving this King Homer as a gift to somebody that doesn't even collect Funko Pops, that's just a Simpsons fan, and having them really like it. Especially the detail of that little tiny Marge in King Homer's hand. That's really what puts it over the top for me. And I think even non-pop fans can agree that this is... Just a really great looking collectible. Okay, so I don't think there's anybody on the planet that could pick the number one Funko Pop of the year and have everybody agree with them. Or even the majority of people agree with them. Because these kind of lists are subjective. I try not to be biased, but it's only natural that some of my personal tastes leak into my picks. For number one this year, surprisingly, I picked a video game Funko Pop. Not usually my favorite genre, but this Nuka Girl is fantastically beautiful in my opinion. I really love that 1940s, 50s pinup style mixed with like that retro future and Coca-Cola. I really love the mixture of all of those themes. I've played Fallout before. I haven't played Fallout 76, so I can't attest to how good or bad that game is. All I know is that this Nuka Girl is the best pop of the year. Like some of the other ones, this is one that can be displayed out of the box, which I'm going to do as soon as I receive this pop. I'm going to take it out of the box and put it on my bookshelf or on top of my PS4 or on my desk somewhere because this is one of those pops that's so cool looking that you don't really have to like it because you're a Fallout 76 fan. You could just be a fan of pinups or space or retro future or Coca-Cola or just well-designed vinyl. The one thing that all my picks for best series have in common this year is that they're all super colorful, starting with this new Fantastic Four line. I have most of these pops, so I've seen them in person, and they look even better than the Glams. The reason I wouldn't make this the best series of the year, though, is that I think Galactus should have been 6 inches. And I feel one of the Johnny Storm exclusives is kind of weak. But other than that, this is a very solid line. The My Hero Academia pop line got a huge expansion this year. With a lot of really cool pops in there. I'm glad that this is a series I don't collect because I'd probably be dropping a lot of money for these because they all look great and there's a lot of them. Sometimes the best series of the year aren't always the biggest ones. There is only five pops in the Disenchantment line, but I think they're all done really well. Animation doesn't always translate into pop form, but these ones look absolutely perfect. And I would say especially Elfo, but they all translated well. The only thing I would nitpick is I think I would have preferred Lucy, which is the black demon with his tail on fire there, to be 
a mini pop that came with a common bean where she's holding a beer. I think that would make it look cooler if you would decide to display these out of the box is to have that Lucy being about a half size pop. Now it was very, very hard to not make this new Scooby-Doo wave the number one series of the year because every single one of these villains is perfect. The spooky space kook really stands out to me. So does Cutler, the witch doctor, the clown, all of them. All these villains together make such a nice set. And they released another Scooby and Shaggy, which I don't mind because traditionally in like the action figure world, you wanted to include the main characters or a version of the main characters in every wave. So new collectors can collect the main characters along with all these villains and side characters. And yeah, I like that they gave Scooby and Shaggy sandwiches. Very appropriate. And the number one series of the year, in my opinion, is The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, but not by a lot. I think all the series I mentioned could easily be the best series of the year, but I'm going to give it to the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror because of how many strong pops there are in this series. King and Kodos, arguably the best of the year. Same with King Homer. Alien Maggie is a favorite. So is the Freddy Krueger version of Groundskeeper Willie. All of them, they're all awesome. Even the one that's my least favorite, Bart, as a fly, looks really good in person, better than I expected. There are really no weak points in this series. And I do have a feeling that Funko is going to make more. There have been 30 episodes of Treehouse of Horror, so there's a gold mine of ideas there. I just hope they keep up with the quality of this series. All right, guys, that was the best of Funko 2019. Really a great year for Funko. Very difficult list to put together. I'm sure I left a lot of great pops off. And you're welcome to let me know what those were in the comments below. Let me know also which pops you think shouldn't have been on this list, what your favorite series is, or what Funko Pops you're looking forward to in 2020. Thank you for watching and have a good one.